Hello again guys and welcome back to another Paganism discussion. Today we're going to be looking once again at totem animals, specifically looking at both the dog and the wolf. Of course, back in ancient Celtic times, there was little division between both the dog and the wolf. In fact, really the only division was is that the dog, in many ways, was just a domesticated wolf, less wild and feral than its counterpart. As such, most of what can be said for the dog and most of what can be said for the wolf can apply to the other synchronously. Analogues to one another if you wish. Of course, like many of the totem animals of the ancient peoples, the dog itself was seen as a chthonic creature linked to the underworld, at least in some ways. Specifically, the dog was seen as having the ability to see not only the spirits of the underworld, but death itself, and so became a creature of omen, foretelling the death of those around it. This ability to see death and dying spirits presented itself in a very real and tangible form as dogs would often howl outside the houses where one of the occupants was indeed dying. It is not hard to imagine, therefore, that the dog was of course a useful spirit guide to the shamanic practitioners. But in a different way to animals such as horses that we've discussed previously, horses, for example, could guide a shamanic practitioner into the other world. However, the dog was more useful for those who performed necromantic practices, such as commune with the dead, signalling the presence of nearby spirits. Dogs themselves were seen as totem animals of the roads, trackways and crossroads. In essence, they stood at threshold places and due to their loyalty and companionship were seen as guardians and sentinels that protected their clan against malicious threats not only from the spirit realm but also of course from the living also. Dogs and wolves in fact to the ancient peoples were perhaps the most personified of animals possessing almost human qualities, qualities such as loyalty, cunning, intuition and of course intelligence, intelligence displayed in hunting, habitat and migration. And so the form of both dog and wolf were perhaps the easiest to take for those who could shapeshift. In fact this is where the werewolf myth of today comes from, as there are many accounts of the pagan peoples of old transforming into such animals with comparative ease. And so the dog was perhaps one of the most highly regarded of animals within the Celtic peoples, not only for the positive qualities that it embodied, but also due to their necessity within the clan structure. Also, as mentioned before, dogs were guardians and protectors of the clan against all sorts of threats. But they also fulfilled a necessary role to the clan within the hunt itself, something the clans relied upon to feed their people. And so we see many references to both dogs and wolves within the artwork and stories of the ancient peoples. For example, we see wolves as the companions of Kurnos, god of the hunt upon the Gundestrip cauldron one of the oldest archaeological finds we have from Celtic times. The Irish hero Fan Macul also had two companions, two hounds of semi-human origin that followed him upon all his adventures. And we even see them in the Cornish story of Dando and his dogs, a story still told today in Cornwall of an indulgent priest out hunting with his dogs that is then taken into the underworld. And so now to finish, I will now look at the symbolism of the wolf itself 
both within Norse and Celtic belief systems. To the Norse, the wolf was a symbol of victory. Odin himself had two wolf companions named Freki and Jerry, and much like Hunan and Mugin, his oracular raven companions, Freki and Jerry also offered Odin otherworldly wisdom. They did this by traveling far ahead of Odin upon his journeys to return back to him and report news upon what they had seen. This allowed Odin to know the best hunting grounds as well as the status of his people. Odin's wolves would also join him upon the battlefield and also aided the Valkyries in transporting fallen warriors to Valhalla. Amongst the Celtic peoples, the wolf was a source of lunar power. This means it has knowledge that is not clearly seen by most other creatures. Celtic lore, in fact, states that the wolf loved having this advantage of uncommon knowing and uncanny intuition. So much so, it is said that the wolf would hunt down the sun and gobble it up so that the moon's power would come forth. This, in legend, made the wolf consummate hunters, and with these remarkable senses, the wolf was seen not only as a guardian, but also as an ally to the Celts. Indeed, the Celts became friendly with them, and as mentioned before, they relied on them for both protection against threat and as an aid in hunting. Well, thank you for watching, guys. Um, that's the end of the video. Um, there, of course, there will be many more videos on the topic of paganism on this channel for many, many more years to come. Um, I don't have a set timetable of when I release the videos. I just kind of do it as and when I get the time. Um, but please keep an eye out if you enjoyed this video for future content. And, of course, please check the playlist also, guys. I have many playlists on my uh, channel. It's the best way to find whatever videos you like. As, that's, of course, where I organize them. Um, and, uh, as I say, if you enjoyed this, go to the Paganism playlists, um, the Fate and the Rune playlists and things like this, or anything of related content. And I hope you find more videos that you like there um, while you wait for me to produce some more. Right, thank you guys. Ta ta for now, and I wish you farewell and uh, good health, and I will see you soon. <laughs>